What's up, my people? Before we start the show, make sure you like the video, comment on the commentary, and subscribe to the channel. Become a part of the GVG family, because without you, there's no us. And as always, we thank you, and all praises to the Most High. Now let's get into it. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Halle, back again. GVG Podcast, Detroit representing to the day that I die, east side in the building, Monster Gang representing. You know how we do, man. It's GVG Podcast. It's God versus gods. The true God, the creator of all versus the, the deities and people that we worship instead of him. You know we about to jump right into it, man. I'm loving this episode, so let's do it. Y'all know how I do. I get my points off the phone, and then I go off the fly. The title of this one is called Shame. Shame. It's called Shame. So we're going to do this one a little different this time. I'm going to read off a few things that I wrote, and then I'm going to have a few of my things off the fly, but we're going to get right into it. So it's called shame. Now, is shame a good thing or a bad thing? The Bible states when Adam and Eve came to knowledge of being naked, they covered themselves out of shame. So. That's a biblical definition of shame without it showing you the actual definition, but it's more like, oh, I'm naked. What am I doing? Put some clothes on. You know, that's shame, shameful. When a woman lives with no shame in how she dresses or who she sleeps with, is she liberated or just clueless to the feeling of shame? That's a real good question. Today's world will have you feeling liberated for things that you do. Sexual relations, not being married or oppressed, as they would say now, not having a man in your life to lead or, you know, to be a partner. Um, just the way women dress, the way people talk, the way people act, the things that people do now. Money is king career is king those type of things but no one talks about shame anymore so are they just liberated beings are we moving to the time of everyone being liberated or is it that we are moving to the time of going away from shame i'll let you be the judge of that one we know what the most high says though so when a man doesn't work or abuses a woman is he just a loser or sleeps with another man. Is he just LGBTQIA? Or is there a deeper level of not having shame? Or feeling that those acts are even considered shameful? So when a man doesn't work. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. You have to work from the sweat of your brow. You have to till that ground. You have to build that house. You have to... You know, pick those fruits. You have to kill that animal. The Most High made it clear as a man, you are responsible for working to be able to eat. We live in a society now where men are drawing back from working. Like, psh, I'm straight. I don't got to work. My girl can work and I can play PS5 all day. No shame, right? You be the judge of that. So if a man is abusing a woman... Is there no shame in him? Like, shouldn't he feel wrong for verbally or physically abusing a woman? If you're beating your woman, why are you with her? If you're punching a woman and slapping a woman and gripping up a woman every day, why are you with her? What's Why? What's the point of you having to... Place yourself in a position of that type of oppression. Not only that, not feeling any shame and all at times, most men want to play the victim after they abuse a woman. They start crying and saying, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. Just hold me like, nah, bro. You should feel some kind of shame for that and you should not be doing that. That is wrong. That is unlawful. And the most high will make you pay for that. You better repent. And I'm not perfect. I've never hit a woman before. I'm just saying I'm not perfect. He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. That's all I'm saying. Shame is defined 
as a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. So I think that definition is etched in stone, but people have changed. So we don't necessarily feel shame or foolishness for foolish things anymore or for wrong things. The Bible says right will become wrong and wrong will become right. The foolish man is wise in his own eyes. So there are a lot of foolish people who believe that what they are doing is wise. And there are a lot of wrong people who believe what they are doing is right. So in turn, they don't even have their clickers on or their antennas on to understand that they're in the wrong or they're doing something foolish. So in turn, they don't even know what shame is. They say shame on you for shaming me. It's the new world, y'all. I just learned this the other day from my daughter. She said I was shaming her. And I said, well, I come from a different time where if you was lazy, they called you lazy. If you were overweight, they called you overweight. If you um, didn't have a job, they called you the dude who didn't have a job. But now it's like you can't call. You can't say I didn't have a job. You're shaming me. You're, I'm depressed now. And I'm not being insensitive or disrespectful, but I just come up in a different time where truth is truth to me. So. You know, shame meant something different for us. So, you know, we're going to move on to the next point, but just just bear with me on this one. I, I really like this topic that we're talking about because the Bible deals with shame a lot. So in an ever changing world where meanings are changing and feelings are at the forefront of everything, social norms are changing and inclusiveness is the new shame. Should a person have to feel shame for something they believe to be right? So it piggybacks off what I was just saying. If a person who is a part of the LGBTQIA community feels that what they are doing is right, do they feel shame? No, because they believe what they are doing is correct. So if social norms are changing and inclusiveness is the new shame, should a person have to feel shame for something they believe to be right? In an ever-changing world where meanings are changing and feelings are at the forefront of everything. There, it's not about fact anymore. It's about fiction. It's not about what was written anymore. It's about what you hear. The devil is telling you what you want to hear. But Christ said it was written. The devil said, I'll give you the whole world. Just bow to me. Christ said it was written. I'm not dealing with you. I'm not bowing down to you because you don't have the right kingdom. It was written on what the right kingdom is. If you knew what was written, you would be able to combat all of these things that are trying to get you to bow down to them. All of these agendas. There are so many agendas that are trying to get you to bow down to them based on your lack of biblical knowledge. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. I'm preaching on today. I hope y'all hearing me. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. They are pouncing on your lack of biblical knowledge. Social norms are changing. People. We live in a time where social norms are changing left and right. There was a time where women couldn't wear pants in church. There was a time where pastors had to wear suits. There was a time where women couldn't work. Social norms. Those are the things that society put in place to be normal. This is not a biblical thing. This is a worldly thing. What would be considered normal in today's time? We have what TV shows us. We have what social media shows us. But socially, the norm is still the nuclear family. The norm is still a man gets up and goes to work and takes care of his family. But social media will make you think. The nuclear family is not the norm. They will make you say, oh, it don't matter if you came in sixth place in a race. You're just as important 
as the guy who came in first. Oh, it doesn't matter if you get a D or an F on your test. You're just as important as the person who got an A. Now, people wise, you're just as important. But academically based, you're not. Physically based, you're not. If you come in sixth place and that person comes in first place, you lost. If you get a D and that person gets an A, he did better than you. That's the end of the story. I'm not saying that person is better than you in life, but that person is better than you when it came to that test. That's real spill. Come on now. We can't live in a mirage. The social norm cannot be delusion. It feels like the social norm of today is delusion. We got to get past that, people. Now, we have individual preference and then we have general population preference on what we believe to be right and wrong. So me as an individual, I can say. Don't hit a woman. Or hit a woman. That's my individual preference. But collectively as a population. As a general population. The norm may be different than my individual perspective. You see. My individual perspective may be. LeBron ain't the greatest. Michael Jordan ain't the greatest. But the general population will come up with a conclusion to say Michael Jordan is number one. Kobe is number two. LeBron is number three or LeBron is number one. That's called a general population. So my individual belief system or my individual opinion is individually. The collective is what rules. So. If the collective is a normal family, if the collective is committing crimes are wrong, if the collective is you shouldn't be a pedophile, the individual person will say, well, I'm a pedophile because of this. Or in their mind, they may not tell you, but they believe that being a pedophile, nothing's wrong with it. This is the difference between an individual perception and a general population of people of what we consider normal. Individual preference and then a general population preference on what we believe to be right or wrong. How many times have you said this might not be a popular opinion, but I'm going to say it anyway, because that means that your opinion is unpopular, meaning with the population, they don't necessarily agree with you. So if someone comes up and says the sky is orange and the sun is blue. The general population is going to say, bruh. Are you smoking dope? Anybody would be able to tell you that clouds are white. The sky is blue. And the sun is yellow, orange, reddish. Right. So we have got from the place of general population and now it's going towards the individual. Now we have people placing merit on the exception and not the rule. That's a good one. It's the exception and not the rule. We used to have the, the conscious Mind of knowing that the exception to the rule is like one out of 10,000. Now we put more merit on the one than the 10,000. We're delusional people. We're going to move on. Is shame just a cover up? If every man in your neighborhood came out as gay. Would it be easier for you to come out because it's accepted in that demo? Or would you have more respect for the ones who come out, even though it's the complete opposite in their neighborhood? So this is a thing of if you live, let's say, five to ten block radius. And every person in every household was a killer or every person in every household was homosexual or every person in that household wore orange and blue Adidas. When you walk out of your house, 
would it be easier for you to come out and go along with the crowd because you don't feel the shame? Or would you say, I'm going to wear what I want to wear. I'm going to have the sexual preference that I want. I'm going to choose not to murder people, even though I live around five blocks of murderers. So now you are in turn the person who is shamed upon. Murderers are saying, oh, you ain't killed nobody, bro. You ain't murder nobody. Psh, he lame. He soft. Oh, you're not going to wear the orange and blue Adidas that we all wearing. You lame. You're not in the group. There's something about when a collective people come together. When the bully has the gun, it's easy to stand behind him. It's hard to stand in front of the gun. Are you the one person who can say, you can kill me. I'm going to die with my beliefs. Are you going to die with your beliefs or are you going to live with someone else's? And that's game. Is shame just a shackle on your leg preventing you from being who you believe yourself to be? I think this would really resonate with the kids of today and the people who think outside of the box of today. I'll say it again. Is shame just a shackle on your leg preventing you from being who you believe yourself to be? I think the rap culture, the hip hop culture has put a big dent in our lives of us not really knowing who we are and what we like. When you were sagging your pants, you did it because of someone else. When you wore baggy pants, you did it because of someone else. You're wearing skinny jeans, you did it because of someone else, someone else's influence. When women wore big pants like Aaliyah, it was because she wore them. Now women are wearing little outfits and catsuit outfits like J-Lo and, and Cardi B. They influenced you. You want to get the BBL like Kim Kardashian? She influenced you. Get your rib taken out. They are influencing you. Understand this. I hope that you really get this. This is a good point. I read it again. Is shame just a shackle on your leg preventing you from being who you believe yourself to be? In this case, shame would be the people. Some people like listening to rock and roll. But do I be the person who says, man, I'm going to listen to what I want to listen to. I don't care what y'all say. Or am I going to be the person that says, I'm not going to do it because they're going to shame me and I'm going to feel bad and they're going to laugh at me and they'll never be my friends again. That's the shackle on your leg. I'm not telling people what to do and what not to do. You want to wear a dress? Do it. It's not up to me. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. Do your thing, bruh. I don't condone it. I'm not with it. But I can't tell you not to have free will. This your boy Hallie, man, and we diving into some stuff today. I feel good about this one. Shame, shame, shame. Mm-hmm. A low down, dirty shame. <laughs> Is shame necessary in a world of unapologetics? Is shame necessary? In a world of unapologetics. Is shame necessary in a world of unapologetics? If someone robs you and they're unapologetically a robber. If someone is overweight and they're unapologetically overweight. If someone has sex with a hundred men and they are unapologetically a whore. The, should shame come into play? Is shame in turn the thing that would have prevented the robber from robbing? Is shame the thing that would have prevented the girl from having a hundred men as sex partners? I think that we live in a world now where people say they're unapologetically whatever they are. And they just live with it through the mistakes, through the pain, through the the uh, trail that they blaze and leave people picking up the pieces behind them. 
you, there's a slippery slope when you talk about being unapologetic. See, a person can be unapologetically black. That just means I'm black and I'm not going to be sorry for it or Hebrew or African-American, whatever you call it, Judah, whatever. But can you go rob someone and say I'm unapologetically black when you're going to jail? See, that's where the lines are blurred. People try to use these things as a one up when it comes to something that has nothing to do with it. So I think we live in a world where the culture has adapted this world of unapologetics with no shame. We are still human beings, regardless of what you are, regardless of your your nationality, regardless of what you identify as. We are all human beings and we all should have a moral compass, a moral code and a shame code to where there's certain things that we won't do. There's a certain line that we won't cross. So. At the end of the day, people, we're talking about shame. This is a word that you haven't heard in a long time, but now we're starting to hear it because there's a different definition of shame. There's it's almost a defense mechanism to be invincible towards someone trying to tell you the truth. That's that was a lot right there. (laughs) I hope you all caught that. I hope that didn't go over your head. That's real game, real talk, real spiel right there. This is your boy, Hallie, man. We talking about shame. This is biblical. I started with biblical shame and we came all the way to the new social norm of shame. So I hope that you got something out of this, man. This is your boy, Hallie, man. Through the ups, through the downs, through the rain, through the pain. We still bringing the GVG podcast. We still bringing the truth, man. It was a power outage today. We came right back, man. We gonna keep going, man. We love all of y'all, man. It's your boy Hallie. Till next time, I'm out, man. It's no, it's no us without y'all, man. We all, we coming up on six months, man. We coming up on six months in July, man. We've been doing this for six months, man. We love all y'all. Everybody that's been tuning in, everybody that's been commenting, everybody that's been liking and sharing. I see all of y'all, man. We really this coming from the grassroots. We coming from the ground up, from our own bootstraps, man. And we love y'all. We gonna be the same in the Pinto as we is in the Mercedes man we love y'all until next time we out thank you for being a part of this experience gvg appreciates every single one of you i hope you came away from this video with a little more perspective patience understanding and purpose so until next time we on christ time